back to the channel. It's still summer here in Texas, so it's super hot out here. Um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my car, go over a couple of things that I've done to it uh, to make it better for drifting. And then uh, we'll do a little bit of drift prep and then fix one small little issue that it has uh, so we can be ready for this weekend's drift event. All right, so if you watch any of my other videos, you know this is a 2006 uh, Chevy Corvette. It's a base model. So you either got a base model or a Z06. Um, so this one's a, not a Z06, so it's got a 6.0 liter V8. It's an LS2. Um, long tube headers, Corsa exhaust, k intake. Uh, Took the factory wheels off and put uh, these aftermarket wheels on there that are 18 by 10 all the way around. Uh, 265 or 275s in the rear for drifting. And uh, right now I have 265s in the front. I'll probably go a little bit lower, maybe uh, 245s with a nine and a half inch wide wheel uh, just for clearance purposes. Right now it kind of rubs a little bit. It's not too bad. Um, so far, I've got the coilovers on there, so I got it lowered down. All right, so if you go inside the car, you see I got, uh, I took the factory seats out and went with the reclinable bride buckets. These are replica seats. Uh, the original brides are super expensive and that's not what this car is about. Uh, I went with the reclinable ones because I daily drive this car and it's just a little bit more comfortable for me. I feel like these are pretty pretty heavy duty, so I have no issues with them right yet. I actually like them, they're very comfortable. And they're wide enough for my, for how big I am. All right, so I got the uh, hydro brake. I did a whole video on this and then I went to edit it and half my footage was gone, so sorry about that. <laughs> um, I can explain though. So you have a, your master cylinders underneath here. It's routed underneath uh, the dash and it goes through a hole in the dash underneath here. Go up underneath the hood. Because this is an inline hydro, the lines come out from right here, uh, going to right here. And it deletes my ABS, which is here. So I took all the ABS lines out and I've teed them off right here. So I have no more ABS in this car and then it goes to the rear wheels. So I also have a aluminum radiator. This is also an eBay radiator. The fitment wasn't super great. As you can see, it's a little tilted just a little bit. Um, that's because it's an eBay radiator, but it does the job is everything clears just fine it's not touching anything and it does its, it does its job it cools the car nice so um, I think the Mishimoto was like seven or eight hundred dollars and this one was 150 uh, totally worth it in my opinion so far I've only drifted on it once and it worked out very well compared to the factory one I'll post a couple pictures right here of the factory versus uh, the aftermarket one else is pretty standard I got the K&N intake right here pretty much stock LS2 uh, Cooch long tube headers Corsa exhaust I think it sounds really good um, I don't really plan on doing anything else because I bought this car to be kind of a budget car almost uh, minimal mods to get it drift um, the only thing I don't think I mentioned was I have the angle kit but if you've seen my other videos and you know that already it's basically just a cut knuckle from PBM and uh, gives me about 45 to 50 degrees of angle on the front. Um, still a couple of clearance issues that I have to work out, but for now, for just uh, fun days at the track, that's all I need. I don't need anything more than that. And it was cheap enough to where I felt like I could justify buying it as, um, compared to some of the full angle kits out there that are a couple grand. I didn't feel like spending that much money on this car because that's not what this car is about yet, at least. Maybe one day in the future it will be, but as for now, it's not. So, 
I'm gonna get a lot of hate about these wheels, but so far so good. I really like them. They balanced out real nice. They've been really durable and I love the way that they look and they were very inexpensive. Uh, I think I got the whole set for like 650 for four of them. So for a budget car, that's perfect. If they get broken, who cares? I'll go buy another one. It's fine. I've drifted on these probably three or four times and I daily drive this car. So they've been really nice. Uh, no complaints there. So uh, if you want to hate on some replica wheels, go ahead. <laughs> I don't care. Whatever. All right. So um, let's get into some drift prep uh, for the weekend. I basically just do a nut and bolt check uh, for all my critical components like the steering and suspension and my wheels. I also use spacers on the front uh, while I'm drifting. I don't daily drive on them. So uh, when I get to the track, I'll put the spacers on, I'll torque them down. Uh, I'll drive a couple laps. I'll come back and check them again and re-torque them. Um, but right now uh, I have an issue with uh, my clutch master cylinder. It's feeling a little squishy and sometimes my pedal doesn't come all the way back up. I know that can be a symptom of the slave cylinder too, but that's not an option to replace right now. So I'm gonna replace the master and hope that it gets better. And if it doesn't get better, then we'll just have to make do with what we have for now until we can replace the slave because the slave is an internal. Uh, so that means we have to basically take everything apart on the rear end. And if we're gonna do that, we might as well change the clutch too, but that's not an option for this week. And uh, so we'll get into that in another video. So let's get started uh, changing the master cylinder. We'll get the car into air and while we're under there, we'll go ahead and do our nut and bolt check and probably change the oil too, because it's due for that. And um, then we should be ready to go. All right, so we got the car in the bigger bay because it's easier to work on in the bigger bay. My wife doesn't like it so much, but <laughs> I don't have my replacement part here yet. This should arrive today, but I want it inside the, the garage just in case it doesn't show up. That way I can keep it safe at night so nobody tries to break into it. So we have it all in the garage. Uh, we're gonna lift it up now, take off the uh, driver front wheel, and uh, we'll go ahead and get to work. Okay, so we got the car up in the air. We got the uh, front wheel off. Now we need to get access uh, behind this panel right here. So basically it's just a few uh, plastic clips uh, and there's a couple of bolts underneath. I wanna say there's three or four bolts underneath. So we're just gonna use an interior uh, pry tool and just pry these clips out. And uh, let's see, I think it's like a eight millimeters underneath, um, eight or 10. Either way, uh, super easy stuff. We're just gonna take this panel off, gain access to the master cylinder, and then we're gonna go from there. All right, we got the panel off. Um, there's basically all those push push clips like this. I just used uh, a pry tool for interior panels and got all the clips up around inside of the fender. And then on the bottom, there was two 10 millimeter bolts. And then surprisingly enough, there was one seven millimeter bolt, which is not very common. Uh, so one seven millimeter Oh, and then the panel just comes right off. And then we have access. Uh, not sure if you can see it, but there it is. There's the master cylinder right there. And so what we're gonna do next, we're gonna go inside the car and we're gonna disconnect um, the clutch master cylinder from the clutch pedal. All right, here we are inside the car. Um, this is the clutch pedal right here. And you can see that is where the master cylinder meets. It's just a look a little clip and just pull the clip off and separate the master cylinder from the clutch pedal. Uh, to get access to this, I took off an interior panel um, just to give me more clearance. That's not 100% necessary, but it does make your life a whole lot easier. And uh, you can also see these braided lines right there are my hydro 
lines so you get a good look at that too so i'm just going to remove the clip off the master cylinder and remove it off of the brake uh, excuse me the clutch pedal and then just wanted to get that separation there and then we can start removing the master cylinder from the firewall all right here's a better look at the clip Basically, there's a stud on the pedal itself, and the master cylinder uh, goes over top of that stud. And this goes on the end of the stud just to keep the master cylinder from coming off. And basically, I just took a needle nose pliers and grabbed it right here and separated it a little bit, and then just slid it off and off. So. This is what it looks like. It took me two seconds to get it off, no biggie. Okay, so before we go any further, um, the master cylinder has an external reservoir, which is right here. And since we're gonna be disconnecting it further down in the engine bay from underneath, um, this will all leak out into there. So I don't want that to happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up. This fluid needs to be changed anyways. So now's a good time to use our turkey baster or syringe or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to suck all this out as much as I can. And that way, when I disconnect it underneath, it doesn't all leak down there. It'll still leak some, but uh, not this much. So I'm going to go ahead and extract all this. And then we'll go underneath the car and disconnect it from there. And then from there, we'll just have to wait for the new part to show up. Okay, here it is. Um, I went ahead and just pulled it out because there's such a little amount of room in there that I actually ended up taking, there's a uh, tank right here for your windshield wiper fluid. And I also like loosened up my fender just a little bit so I could get the reservoir out further, the windshield wiper fluid. Um, so this is basically what you gotta do is there's a quick disconnect right here. And to get that off, there's a pin that goes through and basically you gotta kind of get a flat head and kind of punch it from one side until uh, it comes out just a little bit and then you can grab it with your hand and pull it the rest of the way out. Once that, that's out, you can just pull the rest out. Um, and then I've got some needle nose for a spring clamp on this one and just grasp the spring clamp, move the clamp out, and just pulled the hose off. And you can see there's quite a bit of uh, fluid came out. Uh, once that's done, or you can even do this before, this attaches to the firewall by, um, uh, to attach it, you do it counter, or yeah, counterclockwise, and to detach it, to take it off, you just rotate it clockwise like 45 degrees, and you just pull it out. So this is what the master cylinder looks like. Um, the other one's still not here yet. Hopefully around noon or a little bit afternoon, we'll have this in and then we can throw it all back together. And then we continue with the nut and bolt check. All right, so the new piece came in. It actually came with the new reservoir, which is nice. So this is already attached uh, and another new line right here. So to take, this off was super easy. Uh, I wish I would have seen this one to begin with, but it's just a quick connect. This is going, holding it on like this. So you just pop out that and just disconnect it. It's really easy. So I just put this back together as a whole unit and uh, it should be fairly straightforward. I'll just snake this up through the engine bay, reconnect this. This just goes back through the hole and then uh, like a 45 degree rotation counterclockwise. And then reattaching this to the stud of the pedal, uh, reconnecting the old clip because it did not come with a new clip and then just bleeding it. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw everything back together and uh, we'll see how it works. All right, y'all, well, the day kind of got away from me, but uh, I was able to get the master cylinder all back in and it's working great. Um, bleeding it was really easy. Uh, so I found the best way to do it is you see the hole down in there. I got uh, an attachment like this 
and just jammed it down in that hole and just drew vacuum on it. Um, I use a Mighty Vac pump, but you can also just kind of suck on the other end if you want to, but, and I just kept drawing vacuum and, and uh, just kept doing that until fluid started coming up. And then once fluid started coming up in here, I just pulled it out and uh, my pedal was firm as could be and I just cycled the pedal you know, 40 or 50 times. Um, I used uh, this uh, RBF 600 Motul. This stuff is awesome, works great. Um, of course, there's still some old fluid in there so I'll cycle it out over some time and uh, keep replacing it until it's completely uh, new fluid in there. Um, I was able to get um, I don't know, 50 or 60 miles on it. Uh, and the pedal feels great. The sponginess has completely gone away. So it looks like we're going to be ready for our drift event this weekend. Um, sorry I wasn't able to film any of the other uh, um, drift prep, but basically I just went through and uh, just put a wrench on every nut and bolt underneath the car that uh, has been loosened before, like the coilovers, um, the control arms, uh, anything that I've messed with so far that has been cracked once or twice, I just made sure that they were all tight. Uh, of course, when I get to the track, I'll check all my lug nuts again. And um, really looking forward to uh, this weekend. So stay tuned for the next video and I'll see you next time.